Begin the current daf, Mesechtes Babakama daf Samachtes. Begin four lines down on the top of the Yamad, where the Gemara goes back to a statement made by Rabbi Yechanan, which the Gemara had brought in in the middle of a discussion uh, regarding Machlegis Rabbi Yechanan and Rishlakish, regarding Ish Kiyakdish is Beisa, Kaidish. In other words, we wanted to know when is this hektish taking effect? It has to be that you own it. Question is, is it before Yish and after Yish? So that the Gemara said, does Rabbi Yechonin really say that it, it's because it, Rishlokish had answered that it shouldn't be difficult to him? But someone couldn't shake the issue Bailam Biad Gana. Someone, oh, that the Bailam, he writes, before Yish, because Lachi Yish, Rishlokish had the grav, that Yish is Kaina. But we're talking about that. So why do you have to say that it's Pata because it's Hektish? It should be Pata because it's simply Shalai Tabech Shalai Meicher. He said, no, no, the Bailam will mark in the hands of the Ghanim. The Gemara says, what are you talking about? You think the Bailam can be marked it? I, Bichnan, said, and that's a teaching we're going to start and explain today's Dav. Gezel and Nistayash and Bailam both cannot be marked This one because it's not his, it's not his, and this one because it's not his, and it's not his. So Gemara says, yeah, that's Rabbi Yechanan's teaching. But the Shlokish like the Tznuin, which we're also going to discuss, Mishnah Meister Shani, that seems to tell us that even though it's not in your Rishos, it's, if it's yours, you could go ahead and be Makdashit. So that was the, the Machlik, is Rabbi Yechanan, and the Tznuin that the Gemara is going to discuss in today's Dav. entire world. Some discuss in today's Dav are this halacha, a gezel loy bailam. So something was stolen, but the original didn't give up hope of it yet. So Shneim Enichon Lahakdash Rabbi Yechanan says both can have it Makdashit. Zelafisha and Eshaloi, the Gazan because it's not his. And the Gazan, because it's not in his possession, it's in someone else's possession right now. Aloha Pidyon, which is about redeeming um, what the limitations are on that. Hefker, making something ownerless. How can you do that when it's, again, not in your possession? Harsha, which is, goes into the next stuff regarding uh, giving permission for someone to collect for you. Kerem Revai, which are a vineyard in the f- a fourth year which it has to be redeemed because it's like Meister Shani. Chaimish is the liability of a fifth that is obligated when someone swears falsely. So the halach of Leket is that one of the Matan Sanim is the gleanings, which are the stalks that fall down. So in the Gemara's discussion, that tells us two stalks is Leket. It's not Leket anymore. That's considered too much that the poor is not allowed to take that. The Gemara discusses ways the owners can make their fruits hefker, the spear the Aniyim, who pick three or more stalks because they don't really know the halacha, and they serve gezel. And that's, that's a big part of the discussion regarding when did the owner make these fruits hefker, the spear these Aniyim. And halakech yam ben akutim, which is the classic case of when someone buys wine amongst the kutim, and it's Arab Shabbos, he doesn't have time to separate all the things. What is it that he could say to go ahead and avoid the problems about the untithed produce he's buying from the Kutim. So we begin the current daf. Daf Samachtes, four lines down at the top of the Amid Gufa, we said, and as we just mentioned before, in passing, in the previous daf, in the Gemara's discussion, because it was this Machlikis of Yechon Rishlokish regarding La'achar Yish, what's the halacha? Yechon thought he had a good question on Rishlokish that proved his halacha, that La'achar Yish, you're not going to be kind of just with Yish itself, Rishlokish, oh, yes. And Rishlakish gave an answer which the Gemara asked from this teaching of Rabbi Yechanan. So Gufa, now we go back to explain this Allah. Um, Rabbi Yechanan says, Gazel, if someone stole something, and the owner didn't give up hope yet, both of them cannot sanctify, make hektish this item. Why? The Gazel, because it's not his, there was no Yish, and everyone agrees he cannot be kind of something with Kinyan Gizela unless there was Yish. And the Gazan, and, and the owner, is not in his possession right now. That was the teaching of Rabbi Yechen. Says the Gemara, Umiyom Rabbi Yechen, how Rabbi Yechen really say this? But for Am Rabbi Yechen, and we know this is said throughout Shas, Rabbi Yechen says, Allah is like an anonymous Mishnah. Now it's not, this is the, a Mishnah in Mesechtas Maishu Sheni that says as follows Kerem Rabbi, the vineyard in the fourth year, for he mitzayin and oise be kuzuzes so they would, uh, they would put signs on it with putting clumps of, of, of earth around the border of the vineyard. 
A lot of people know that it's Kerem Revai, and therefore it's forbidden without redeeming it first. Simna, because the sign is Kedama, like earth. Ma Adama, just like earth, Ikano Amine, you can have benefit from it at a later point in time if you plow it and you plant and you harvest. It takes time, but you can have benefit from it. Avhainami, that's the sign by putting earth around it. Kimifarika, when you redeem it, Charles or Nurmine, you're allowed to have benefit from it. So it's, it's the same symbolism that, like earth, that, hey, now it's forbidden, but there's, some, there's a way you go through the effort to have benefit. Okay, continues the Mishnah, Bishal Arla. Let's say it's a, it's a vineyard of Arla in the first three years. So Bechar says, you put around it, which Rashi explains, are like these clay tiles, which sim, the, 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 the symbolism is Bechar says, like these tiles that Marchar says, just like the earthenware shards, Shein Anomine, there's no benefit you could have from it. So then, Afhai, the less Beha Nomine, so do this, there's no benefit from it, meaning because it's Arla, and Arla is forbidden in its first three years, there's totally Isr Hana. So, uh, therefore, that's going to be the sign for Arla. Bishal Kavaris, let's say it's an area of these graves. So you, what you put around it is Besid, you put lime, which simna, the, the, the symbolism is the Chibur, which it's white, Chatzam, it's like bones, and therefore that, that lets people know that there's, uh, with this color coding, what's here, that there's a grave over here. And also, um, and um, you, 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 you uh, liquefy the, the lime with water, and you pour it around the grave, this should be very white. And again, so that's really clear that there's bones over here. Now, Amr Shem Gulil says, when do we say this, that we make a sign for passerby, that they should not stumble in the halacha, is b'shviyas, in the shmitir, which is the hefkin in it. Your property is hefker for people to take stuff, um, and therefore it's permitted for them to come and eat. So, when they're coming, so make a marker what they shouldn't be eating to save them from sin. But in the other year, the Shemitah is like, which they're coming to steal. <laughs> what are you coming? I have to make a sign that this is, you know, uh, like, you know, Chal of Stam, that you shouldn't steal my milk from, from, the, from the fridge, my, my cocoa. So let them eat what's forbidden. And how they tell you, let be honest. So let it, uh, feed it to the wicked and let them die. I mean, to say, if the guy's coming to steal, we're not obligated to go make signs to say, oh, this camera vine, and this and that. You know, when you steal, make sure you don't eat this because this could be dangerous for you. You know, so he says not responsible. He says about snuin. And this is what we quoted on the previous daf, as we quoted Rish Lakish, not saying like Rabbi Yechanan, which we said that Rabbi Yechanan, I, Rabbi Yechanan says, Halach, we asked on Rish Lakish, Rish Lakish, Rish Lakish, he's saying like the snuin, which this is what we're actually asking on Rabbi Yechanan from. The discreet ones, they would leave monies, and they would say, Whatever was, 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 was taken from here, should be deconsecrated on these funds. Now, the, the correct reading, and this is what we had mentioned on the previous staff, um, is that even though it's not in his possession anymore, because it was already taken, you see that he could redeem it and, and, and put that onto the, the funds, which is not like Rabbi Echanan because it's already been taken by the Ganev, whoever it is that's coming into your field. And still, the discreet ones, they would let people know that, okay, meaning they, they would read, they would, do, they would be mechal, they would be paided on the fund, not, not to have them stumble. Meaning, because they took, let's say, Karim Ravai. So the question is, but Rabbi Echanan holds, that you cannot be mocked as something when it's not in your rishus anymore. And the guy took it already. So seemingly, you see not like Rabbi Yechon, and that's actually, actually what the more answered for Rish Lakish in the previous stop. So says the Gemara Bechitim, we begin to say, no, man tana tznuin, who is the tana of this tznuin, Mishnah, Mesech, this Maisa um, Sheni? It's not an anonymous Mishnah. I mean, the whole question we're, ba- we're saying is, oh, uh, Rabbi Yechonon, how could you say this? You hold like a Stam Mishnah. It's not a Stam Mishnah. It's Rabbi Shimon Lil. Meaning, if you read the Mishnah, if you take a look at the Mishnah, we had quoted the Mishnah. And then, in the middle of the Mishnah, which Rabbi Shimon Lil says, when did we say this? By Shvi is where it's Hefker. But the other years, no, let him, let him die. 
So it's the continuation of Rabbi Shimon's statement about Snuin. What they would do is they would put monies and they would say, meaning you could read this two ways. You could say that unrelated to the, it's not nothing to do with Rabbi Shimon, Mingam Leil. It's saying even when they would be a Shemitah year. So let's say a guy by mistake didn't see the sign and they took it. That Snuin wanted to make sure that no one ever sinned on their property so they would have it. So the Gemara was trying to entertain now and saying, no, it's not going back on the whole Mishnah. It's it's Shimming Mingam Lil finishing off a statement that said it's only in the in the in the Shemitah year. And in the Shemitah year, okay, that Snuin would go ahead and make sure, um, or or even if not, but it was just Shimming Lil. And therefore, Rabbi Yechonon Kistam Yichidol Loyamar Rabbi Yechonon is not saying like anonymous Mishnah, like going like a Das Yachid. But says the Gemara, no, you can't say that. He's not going to hold Rabbi Shimming Lil. That wouldn't be good enough of an answer. Because Amr Rabbi Yechonon Rabbi Yechonon Rabbi Yechonon himself says. Kamalkam Shashan Mishim Gulu Be Mishnah Zain, wherever Mishim Gulu is quoted in our Mishnah is, Halacha Kamais, Halacha follows like him. So even if it's Mishim Gulu, he would have to pass it like it's Nuin, because there's only three exceptions. Chutzmi Arib, Betzidon, Berai Rechreina, which are three different cases mentioned throughout Shas. Those are the only times we don't pass it like him. We don't rule like him, but everywhere else we do. So back to the question. Even if you're going to say it's Mishim Gulu, Mishim should have to hold like it's Nuin. And what? And what would they do? I mean, not necessarily to do like this new one, but the fact that you could do such a thing that even though it was taken already, you see that you could be paid it. But Rabbi said you can't do anything when it's out of your rishos. So we have a steer in Rabbi Yechonon. Some of them said, no, loy tamer, don't say, kala nilkat mizeh. Don't say whatever it was. It's not like they came at the end of the day and they say, okay, he surveys his, his, his plantation, he says whatever was taken from here, um, should be redeemed on monies that have no ela ima call hamislaket miza. Whatever will be gathered in the morning when it's still in his possession, he says, Oh, whatever will be taken, I want that it should be redeemed. So, therefore, that doesn't contradict. That is um, still in his possession at that time. Says the Gemara, but Amir and Rabbi do you really think Rabbi Yechonon said like this? That the halacha of the tznuin was in the morning, and in other words, before when it's still bishusa, and that's why he was able to redeem it. But Vaham Rabbi Yechonon again, that back to the same Rabbi Yechonon. He says that tznuin, which is this halacha in the Mishnah Ma'aseh Sheni, which we're trying to explain, v'Reb Daisa and Reb Daisa, Amr Daber Echad. They said the same thing. Now the problem then becomes Reb Daisa Nilkat Kama. Reb Daisa is told after the fact. Where do we see this? The Tanya, we learned in the Braisa. This is talking about regarding the leket of the harvest. The halacha, the Mishnah, Mesech Tzpeyet tells us, is that when two stalks fall, that's called leket. The poor is allowed to take it. Shalish, when there's three stalks, that's really too much. That's not leket anymore. And the poor are not allowed to take it. But the problem is the paupers are not well-versed in the halacha. They're coming around, the namushes, they're coming, they're looking. And the guy might take three. Not That's chopping exactly. So therefore, the balabayis has to be mafkrit, not to cause a stumbling block for gazela for the poor people. So Yudah means it's like this. Shachris in the morning, balabayis, the, the homeowner would get up and he would say like this. Whatever the poor gather today, yeyefka should be ownerless. He doesn't want them to stumble on this halach. And this is the point that we're getting to, which Rabbi Yechonet said, the Rabbi and the Tznuin are saying the same thing. He says, no, in the evening, at the end of the day, the Balabais comes, and he says, whatever the poor took should be Hefker. Which Tyson discusses the differences between the morning and the evening. But like upon them, one thing is clear, is if Dais is told when it's already out of your possession. It's after the day is over, they already took it, and now he wants to say, okay, it should be Hefker. And Rabbi Yechelen says that Snuin and Rabbi Daisa say the same thing. So it's not Kala Meslaket, it's Kala Niklat. And if that's the case, it's Kala Nilkat. So that means to say that it's even Sha'in the Bishusai. It says the Mishnah, Stam Masnitin, in Mesech the Meister Sheni, or Rabbi Shimulil, whichever one that we pass, like both according to Rabbi Yechelen, is saying that. Even though it's not in your shows, you could be ma- you could you could be mafkred, you could be paided. So that contradicts Rabbi Yechon. There's other teaching that you cannot be makdish when there's not b'shusay. Says the Gemara, No, what you have to do 
in this price that we just quoted, switch around the opinions. Reb Yehuda is really Reb Daisa. Reb Daisa Reb Yehuda. Reb Daisa is really Reb Yehuda. Ah, very good. Reb Daisa is the one that's saying in the morning, not at night. And Reb Yechon is saying that Snuin and Reb Daisa are saying the same malacha, which is different kolam aslaket, not kolam nilkat. Oh, which is when it's still b'shusai, and therefore that's exactly Reb Yechon's halacha. Says the Gemara, my apchet masnita. Why are you inverting the brisa? You're saying that a brisa you have to switch around the opinions. Afchel Reb Yechonon. Why don't you switch around Reb Yechonon? Who's not Meira? His teaching. They must say Snuin Reb Yehuda Amr Why don't you pick? Why don't you say that he that his words were not Reb Daisa? It was Reb Yehuda. That you could keep the brisa as it is. So I mean, they said no. Leisagid leimas hapchet masnita. No, it, it's actually not. It's, it's even without Rabbi Yechanan, we wouldn't be able to not invert the teaching of the Brice. Why? Because I said, I'll tell you why. The Bahamas Neat and Gatani, in this Brice we learned, the Isla Rabbi Huda Bereda. You're quoting in this Brice, the Behuda holds of the halachic concept of retroactive verification. Because what's he saying? How are you quoting Behuda in the Brice? That in the morning, he says, whatever will be picked by the poor is Hafka. Now, what that means to say is, what the poor end up taking, we, we say retroactively, is verified that this was Hafka. Now, even though the homeowner in the morning does not know, because maybe they're not going to take more than what they halachically are allowed to, and therefore it's not necessarily going to make anything Hafka, we say retroactively, <laughs> this was what he was Mafka. Problem is, B'Shamin Le'Bihud Ba'amadolas Le'Brera, we know elsewhere that we find Rabbi Yudah does not hold a Breira. So we have to switch it around for a different reason. Rabbi Yudah himself does not, which is either Mishnah Masech and Demai, which is really a Breisa, as a continuum to Tumad Beis. Alekech Yain Ben Akutim. This is brought many times in Shas, this exact case. As you see by the Messiah Sashas, Yuma, Avon, Meila, Hulan, Gitten, brought many different times. Someone buys wine from amongst the Kutim. So this is on Arab Shabbos by Ben Hashmoshes, as the Bryson teaches, and it's becoming Shabbos, and he doesn't have what to drink on Shabbos, and he doesn't have time to separate the Trumas and Maestras before Shabbos. So what he could do is like this. It's just enough to say. He says, Shnei Lugin, two Lugin out of the hundred, which is the, the generic number of one out of fifty that you do for Truma. Shani Osla Hafish, I'm going to end up separating. How do you Truma? They are Truma. I mean, it's somewhere in there, but it's separated. Asada, Ten, one tenth of it. This maestration is the first type. Test, nine of it, because once you already took off ten, it's already remaining with ninety. So a ten from that after the maestration is taken off is maestrosheni. But here says the Braisa Umechel. He actually deconsecrates, meaning he takes the maestrosheni funds and deconsecrates onto Khun to money that he has in his house. Like Rashi explains, whatever he has the ability to remedy, he could remedy. Because with just words, it's enough, as, uh, as, as, as the Gemara says uh, uh, elsewhere, that it's enough to go ahead and uh, deconsecrate for stuff you have in your house. So then you'll deconsecrate it right away, so it won't be in that barrel of wine itself. And the Shaysim Yad, the Rameh says, Rameh, you can drink right away then, make Kiddush Friday night on this barrel of wine that you bought from the Kutim. Rebbe Yehuda, and this is what we want. Rebbe Yehuda, Rebbe Shimon, these three ten nine. Oisrin, they say, no, no, this is forbidden to be done. Why? Explains Rashi. Because they don't hold a Breira to say, oh, what you happened to drink for your Kiddush on Friday night was from the Chulun. Oh, and the Truma and the Maiserishan, oh, they're remaining there somewhere in the jug. We don't say that. Because they don't hold a Breira. Wait a second. If Yudah doesn't hold a Breira, so how could you quote him in our previous Mishnah Maiserishan, in the Brisa? That he's the one who says, in the morning, he says, whatever the poor are going to take, I'm being mafker. But that relies on the principle of Breira, and Rebuda doesn't hold the Breira. So we have to switch around anyway. That's why we're not switching around Rebbe Yechanan's statement to make sense how he says it's noon and, 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 and Rebbe Yisrael the same thing. To say, oh, maybe he meant Rebbe Yehuda. No, because anyways, we have to switch around the Brisa. And Rebbe Yehuda must be the one who says at night, and Rebbe Yisrael is the one who says in the morning, oh, and that's just like the way we're explaining for Kala Maslachet, not Kala Nilkid. Which is like how Rabbi Yechon is teaching because you cannot be mad to show point to something that's not Bershusa. So Gemara says, okay, Amri, they said, at the end of the day, 
Amai ko afchad leila and the gear says lemas nita. So wait, why are you inverting the brisa? Hashem the kash and biuda the biuda, like you said, because the biuda would contradict himself. Because on the one hand, he we we already know elsewhere that he says that he doesn't hold the brayer. So anyways, you have to switch it around. So says the gemara, hash na mikash rabbi yechon rabbi yechon. But we still have a difficulty with Rabbi Yechonon. Why? The Am Rabbi Yechonon. You said according to Rabbi Yechonon, Lloyd Tema, don't say Kol Anilkat. We couldn't say that whatever was gathered in the evening, which was the opinion of the Tznuin, which we're saying the Girsa cannot be Kol Anilkat, has to be Kol Amislakit. Because again, Rabbi Yechonon held that you cannot be Makhtar Shem that's not Bershusen. The problem is, you're saying, okay, Ela Ema, so you say Kol Amislakit. Whatever will be gathered. Now, but Alma Isle Brera. Right? So obviously, what are you saying? That must be Rabbi Yechonon holds that we do say Brera. Because you, you need him to say Kol Hamas Lakit so that it's Bershusai. Problem is, it wasn't picked yet. And you don't know what's going to be picked. That's, that's relying on the principle of Brera. Wait a second. But Rabbi Yechonon let's say Brera. Rabbi Yechonon himself doesn't hold the Brera. Where do we find that? Because Am Rabbi Asim Rabbi Yechonon, also a well-known teacher brought many times in Shas, is that Ha'achen Shachalku Brothers that divide the Yerusha, says Rabbi Yechanan, Lukuchesen. They are buyers, not Yarshim. Meaning, what, that, what does that mean to say? We don't say that retroactively is revealed that this is the portion that was coming to every single one. And, the, and, and, and Yerusha, the Torah doesn't say it should be undone. No, we say that this portion that this one got was really was supposed to be for the other one. And they swapped it. So it's essentially like each brother is buying from the other one. And therefore, Mechzirin Zel Zabba Yebel. Therefore, Rabbi Yechon held that every Yebel year, they have to go ahead and give it back to each other and, 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 and undo it again because, like, really like a sale. And the sale window that Yebel goes back. Okay. But one thing we see is that that's based on the principle of not saying Brera. Because if you say Brera, you say, no, this was my Yerusha, that was your Yerusha. If you don't say Brera, we don't know. How am I supposed to know that this was supposed to go to you and this was supposed to go to me? So it's like, so you see, he, he himself doesn't know the Brera. And so then, how could you explain to me that he's saying, like, like that's new and, and that it's called Hamis Lakid, and that's where he's saying, like, Reb Deis, so that we have to translate that because Reb Yud himself doesn't hold of this, so that's to be the Reb Deis that he's saying it's like, which is in the morning, but that's based on Brera. He doesn't hold the Brera himself. So it says the Gemara, okay, Ella, rather you're right. But Elam, the truth is, let's leave everything as it was. The the the, the 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 text of the of the Mishnah in in, in Demai in my Sashain is Kol Hanilkat. The Tznuin and Rav Daisa said whatever was was gathered, let's leave it. It what what, what was after the day is over. It, that this was what started the whole Gemara's discussion. The whole discussion started. We have a Stamasnitin of Tznuin. Meaning the, the teaching of, of Rabbi Yechanan that Rabbi Deis and the are saying the same thing, that makes sense. Because they're both saying the same thing, not like Rabbi Yechanan. They're both saying that even after the day is over, you could say, okay, whatever they took, I'm going to be mafka. But it's not in your Rishos anymore. So, so you have a non Mishnah saying not like Rabbi Yechanan, because Rabbi Yechanan said you can't do such a thing. And that's why he asked Rabbi Yechanan, you, you, you pass in Rabbi Yechanan, halach yikistam asnitin. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yechanan, Stama Achrina Ashkach. But Rabbi Yechanan found a different anonymous Mishnah to say like. So it says Rashi, and if you're going to ask, but wait a second, how does that take care of um, the other problem that we had? Because we said you have to invert the Mishnah anyway because of Bereira, which we said is the stira. In Rabbi Yehuda, we said, we proved Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold the Brera. So you're telling me now, Rabbi Yechanan holds, no, you're right, it's, it's Nuin and Rabbi Deisa are saying the same thing because they both hold it's whatever was gathered already. Well, that would make Rabbi Yehuda then the one that holds in the morning. But that would mean that it would base it on the principle of Brera. And you showed me Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold the Brera uh, from the Mishnah regarding if someone buys wine from the Kutim. Says Rashi, no, you don't have to switch it around because the Buddha actually does hold a Brera. The reason why when you buy wine that the, that the Mishnah over there says that he holds his Aser is for a different reason. It's because of what's called Shemi Baka Hanoid. Simply because it really is a principal Brera. But if it bursts the barrel before uh, Matzah Shabbos, you never get a chance to 
separated, it turns out that you were drinking Tevel all along because you never actually separated. That's the reason we hold Sasa. But really, because of Breira, Breira, he actually would hold that actually would work. So that's not a problem. But Rabbi Yechanan found a different Stama, Ditnan, which was our Mishnah. Ooh, comes back to our Mishnah. What's this? Says the Gemara, our Mishnah said, if someone steals from a Ganav, he doesn't pay Kefal. Now the question is like this, am I? But why is this like this? Meaning, I understand that for the first Ganav, the second Ganav doesn't pay Kefal because we're going to be based on We know the Drasha says, it says in the Torah, that if it's stolen from the house of the man, but you should not, not from the house of the Ganav. A labaylam nishalam. Interesting question. Why don't you pay kefal to the original owners? You're stealing from him. Wherever it is, it's his. El alav shmamina. Rather, what do we infer from this? Zelafi shenishaloi. You don't pay the kefal to the first guy because it's not his, and you don't pay to the original owner of zelafi shenibir shusai because it's not in his possession. So our stamas nitin proves your biyachin and talacha. So that's why he didn't paskin like that Mishnah. It, it, it's not difficult. The Mishnah in Mesechtas, Maeser Sheni, from the Tznuin, on Rabbi Yechon, because you have a different Stamas Nitin, which is our Mishnah. Says the Gemara, wait a second, my Chaz Dasal Basah, he's Stama. Why did he see fit going like our anonymous Mishnah? Levit Kari Stama, the Tznuin, why doesn't he go like the anonymous Mishnah in Mesechtas, Maeser Sheni, of the Tznuin, that we see that they held that you could do it even if it's not Bershusai, after the Anim already took it. says the Gemara Mishnah of Sayyid Ali He likes the Stamastin of our Mishnah because the Pasik assists the Halacha because the Torah says when the man is going to sanctify his house and it's going to be holy to Hashem which teaches us by the prototype that it picks about the Halacha of being Makadish something. Ma basically Bishur says just like his house is in his possession. Of Kol Bishur says so to whatever is in his possession that's where you can be Makadish. But if it's not in your Rishur's the Pasuk seems to support the Stam Masnin of our Mishnah, that then you cannot be Makhdash, and therefore he said, like our Mishnah, therefore it's not difficult. The whole question we started with the Daf with, which is the Stam Masnin of this new one, because you have the Stam Masnin of our Mishnah that seems to be stronger of an opinion. Now, the Gemara points out a few different things from this teaching of Rabbi Yechanan. Amabai says, Elav the Amabai Yechanan, the Fnaf Rabbi Yechanan having said the following idea. Now, we said this parenthetically. In our question on Rabbi Yechanan, that he pointed out that we found it difficult. How could you translate Snu in this Kala Maslaket and not Kala Nilkat? I, Rabbi he's clearly saying Kala Nilkat, and that was part of our Gemara's discussion. Okay, but now the Gemara is going to make a few different uh, points on this teaching of Rabbi Yechanan. And Abai makes the first point. He says, if not Rabbi Yechanan saying that the Snu Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi that they're saying the same thing, Avamina, I would have said that's not true. I would have said Snuin Isla de Bdesa. The, the Snuin, meaning that we don't mean the Snuin themselves, we mean the Tana of Snuin, who says this teaching of that they after at the end of the day, when the paupers came by and took three gleanings instead of two, which is really Gezel, that they hold the Gribdaisa and Gribdaisa, I would say, however, less Lud Snuin. Why? So the Gemara explains. Snuin is Ladrabdaisa. The Snuin, they hold the Gribdaisa because Uma Baganav. If by a Ganav, which is the case that the Snuin are discussing, um, which they're taking from his vineyard. Abdurabana Tekanta, the rabbis did a remedy, which if a Goslin, that they said, okay, you could say at the end of the day, whatever they took, Shnabik Zela, you could be Mafkrit. Tzanim, so Reb Daisa, who's talking about Leket, by the gleanings, by pulpits, so you remember, do I have to say, of course they made such a takana, that you could do it after, that they would make such a thing after the fact? Reb Daisa, let's look this noon. But I would have said, Reb Daisa does not hold like this noon, because Anim, who dubbed Lebron Takanta, by the pulpits, that's where the rabbis made such a remedy, that, okay, after the fact, that will say that the person could go ahead and be mafker. A ganav lo the rabban takanta, but regarding a ganav, which is the case that uh, the tznuin were discussing, the the rabban did not make such a takana. It says taisi did maskel havamina, like a few lines in. He says, but that's what the Bible says. I would have said without Rabbi Yechonah. 
But now the Rabbi Yechanan says it's Nurim Dais. said the same thing. So then he holds that it's not because of a takana, it's Minadin. That, yeah, it's yours, even though it's not in your possession. And therefore, you could go ahead and do it even after the fact. Again, meaning not Rabbi Yechanan, like we pointed out. But, but just at least this point, I would have said that there's what to differentiate. If you would have said it's like a takana, then it would have made, it made sense to differentiate. But like Tesh explained, but Rabbi Yechanan is saying it's not a takana, it's a Meikar Adin. And the Meikar Adin, yeah, you could do it even after the fact. That's one Ahara the, the Gemara makes. Amar Rab, he says another point. He loved Amar Rabbi Yechanan, not for Rabbi Yechanan saying that they're saying the same thing. I mean, I would have said, no, not necessarily. I would have said, Mantan at Snuin is Remeir he. So the Gemara explains. Lav Amar Rameir doesn't Remeir say Mesech this Kedushin. Meiser Mamagavayu. Meiser Shani is Hashem's money. So wherever the Meiser is, it's not the person's, it's Hashem's. Hashem lets you use it, but it and you can benefit from it, but it's Hashem's. Now, it's a little bit of a cheshbon. But follow even so, Le'inyin Pedia, regarding redemption, the Torah considers it as if it's in his possession, as Rashi explains, which it made you obligated in a chaymish. Now, there's chaymish in a few different places. One of the applications is that when you redeem it, you have to add a fifth if you're the owner. If it's not his, you don't have to add a fifth. Because chaymish only by the owner, like it says, mimasroi. So, even though it's not yours, because my is Hashem is money, but regarding redemption, oh, for that we consider it as your own. There's something says in the Pasuk in Vayikra. It says, If a person is going to redeem from his Maisra, Chamishisa Yesu Allah. So the added fifth, he has to add on. So, Karach Mona Maisrai, Maisra Chaymish. The Torah is calling it, quote unquote, his Maisra, and he has to add on a fifth. So, wait a second. So, therefore, I would have thought to say, Kerem Revai Nami. I would have thought to say, also, a vineyard in its fourth year would have the same halacha. Why? Because that we know, Gama Kaidish Kaidish Mimaisa, as Gzeir Shava, the word Kaidish that says by Maisa and says by Kerem Revai. Ksivach says by Kerem Revai, the vineyard in the fourth year, Kaidish Ilulim, it's holy with praises. Ksiv Gab Maisa says by Maisa, Chomasa Aretz and all the tithing of the land, Vizara Aretz from the seed of the land, Mepriya Aids from the fruits of the tree, La Shem Wits, Vashem Kaidish, it's holy. Okay. So Gzeir Shava, what's Gzeir Shava teaching? Ma Kaidish Zimbabwe Maiser, just like the word Kaidish said by Maiser. Ah, like we just said before, even though it's Hashem is money. But the Inyapudi regarding redemption, Okrah Mona Bishu said the term makes it like as if it's his. Oh, Afhai. So to hear by Kerem Ravai, Kaidish Namidach Sivga by Kerem Ravai, when it says Kaidish by Kerem Ravai, it's Avagav the Lab Mama Didehu, even though it's not his own money, but because it has the equivalent of like. The halach of Maisusheni, lenya chule, but regarding deconsecrating, ukemach on the b'shusay, the term made in his possession. The haki is to b'shusay, because even when it is in his possession, nami halav the dehu, it's also not his. Now, but matzimachal, but it could deconsecrate it. Shemachim matzimachal, that's why it could deconsecrate. Meaning, because exactly what happens, like by Maiser, abagabi leke, but I would have thought to say by leke. Which is the other Mishnah? I mean, we're comparing these two halachas. One's when somebody comes and takes from your camera, by, and one is, and that's the halacha of the Tznuan, and one is the halacha of Rabbi which is talking about Leket. So, says Rava, if not for Rabbi Yechanan, I would have thought to say, no, it's not true. The Tznuan and Rabbi are not saying the same halacha. Because who is the Tznuan? That's by camera, by. That's Remeir. Because even though it's not in your possession anymore, but it's never in your possession. Because it's really Hashem's. Just like Ben-Maiser. And even so, the Torah says, it's yours, you can do it. Ah, but Gabi Leka, but Leka, keeping him in mind the day, that is his money. That's not Hashem's money. Only when it's in his possession could he declare it onless. The less of when it's not in his possession, I would say, he cannot make it onless. That's what says Rav. I would have thought to say without Rabbi Yechon, I would have said, no, it's not the same teaching. But says Rashi, but now that Rabbi Yechon has said, Tznun Rabbi Yechon has said the same thing, obviously their reasoning is, is because you don't need it to be Bishusai. That's what they hold, not like Rabbi Yechon himself. Even by anything, as long as he wasn't Miyayish, he could be Mafkur, he could be Maktish, he could be Mechal, 
And therefore, that's the teaching of Yechon. But if not for him, I would have said, no, maybe it's Reb Meir. And therefore, it's a very different teaching than the teaching of Reb Dyson. That was the second point that Gemara made. A third point, Amr Avina. He says another idea. He says, Love the Amr Yechon. If not for Reb Yechon, then say, It's new in Reb Dyson, Amr Dabe Echad, that they say the same thing. I mean, I would have thought, thought to say, Man Tana Tznuin. Who is the Tana of Tznuin? It's Reb Dyson. It actually is Reb Dyson himself. Meaning, it's not like they both say the same thing. It is the same Tana. Now, why would I say that it is Reb Daisa, if not for Reb Yechelen saying that they're two different Manda Amram? I would say, you know who is the Tznuin? It is Reb Daisa. And why would I say that? Because of the question we originally had. We said Reb Yechelen Pasa Lacha like a Stam Mishnah. And the Stam Mishnah says that you could do it after the fact. Rabbi Yechon himself holds, you cannot do it after the fact. Rabbi Yechon, as the Gemara continues, top of the Ayn of Aleph, Kestam Yechida Loi Amar. Does not say like an anonymous individual Tana. So there's actually two interpretations of taste is what the Gemara is saying. The second one says that I would have thought to say that. Rabbi Yechanan doesn't hold like a Stam Masnitin that's going like a Das Yachin. And I would say that so that it wouldn't be difficult on him to Stam Masnitin. And I would say, who is the Tana of the Tznuin? It is Rabbi Daisa. And that would prevent the question on Rabbi Yechanan. But, but, but now that Rabbi Yechanan answered in a different way, that he said, no, there's a different Stam Masnitin that I'm holding like, but this is actually Tznuin is a different Tana then Reb Dais is not Reb Dais himself. So then that seems to say that Reb Yechon and Paskin, even like Estam Asnitin, that is Yechida. But if not for Reb Yechon himself saying it's two different opinions, I would have said it's the same opinion to prevent the question from being asked on Reb Yechon. Thank you to any time.